Kawartha Lakes Community Marred by Three December Building Fires, Dan Kearns, The Standard, Kawartha Lakes. A number of recent fire investigations are taking place in Kawartha Lakes. On Saturday, December 16th, the Ontario Provincial Police, OPP, reported they were called to a residence near Janetville because of a fatal fire. According to the OPP, at approximately 2.30 a.m., officers, along with the City of Kawartha Lakes Fire and Rescue, were dispatched to a house fire on Cedar Crescent near Janetville. A 62-year-old male was pronounced deceased at the scene. The Office of the Ontario Fire Marshal and the Office of the Chief Coroner are currently conducting an investigation. One day later, on Sunday, December 17th, the Kawartha Lakes Police Service, KLPS, attended a residential fire on Russell Street East in Lindsay. When officers arrived, the house was fully engulfed in flames. No injuries resulted from this incident. The Kawartha Lakes Police Service Criminal Investigation Branch continues to investigate with the assistance of the Office of the Ontario Fire Marshal, a KLPS press release stated. A City of Kawartha Lakes press release further explained, Fortunately, the basement tenants of the Russell Street dwelling managed to escape unharmed, thanks to a working smoke alarm which was interconnected with the upper-level alarm of the residence where the fire originated. The functioning alarm played a pivotal role in alerting the occupants, underscoring the crucial importance of early detection. On Tuesday, December 19th, a third Kawartha Lakes fire, this one in Cambrai, was being investigated. On December 19th, 2023, at approximately 7.22 p.m., officers, along with the City of Kawartha Lakes Fire and Rescue, were dispatched to a house fire on Elm Tree Road near Cambrai, an OPP press release stated. The press release added, no one was injured during this incident. Scugog approves 2024 capital budget. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Scugog. The Township of Scugog has approved their 2024 capital budget. The decision was made at a meeting on Monday, December 18th. This year's capital budget totals $11,949,400. Some of the notable projects in the budget include the acquisition of an aerial pumper fire truck at a cost of $1.9 million, a splash pad replacement at Palmer Park costing $600,000, a Water Street rehabilitation project from Scugog Street to Queen Street in the amount of $1.35 million, and repairs to the Blackstock Community Hall at $360,000 and the Blackstock Arena at $90,000. Ward 4 Councillor Harold Wright asked if the aerial fire truck will be used more than three times in seven years. Fire Chief Mark Burney responded, If we had an aerial in the station, let's say since 2000, we would have called it out 92 times to date. That would be for structure fires, which would be for alarm activations at local and residential buildings, at the hospital, and for smoke in a building and smoke in a home. 92 times we would have called it out or it would be part of the response protocol within the community. When asked about the timeline of receiving this truck, Chief Burney stated the township could be waiting the better part of two and a half years to receive it. Regional Councillor Ian McDougall questioned if there are any protections in place so the dealer of the truck won't raise the cost before the township receives it. CAO Ken Nix said the township would make every effort to ensure it was a fixed-rate contract. Mayor Wilma Watton stated the township has been collecting funds since 2019 to put towards the purchase of this truck. Brock hands out 2023 Accessibility Award. Daryl Knight, The Standard, Brock. A local volunteer has been awarded the Township of Brock Accessibility Award for 2023. In December, Olga Kuzmich was awarded the 2023 honor for her work toward promoting inclusivity at the Brock Public Library. In a release, the township noted the award was presented to recognize Ms. Kuzmich for going above and beyond to ensure an environment of accessibility for all patrons of the Brock Public Libraries by providing tutoring support to students in need, by creating a supportive and inclusive environment, as well as advocating an inclusive and accessible community for all. The Accessibility Award is presented annually to an organization, business, or individual in the township, which has shown a concerted effort to improve accessibility. Improved accessibility can mean either physical alterations or new programs, features, or services 
which reduce barriers and permit great access for those with disabilities. Acid Reflux is No Fun by Tina Y. gerber McCurley. Gastroesophageal reflux, also called GERD, is a common condition where stomach acid flows back into the esophagus, causing irritation of its lining. So troubles are caused by the lower esophageal sphincter. That's the muscle which controls the passage between the esophagus and stomach, and when it doesn't close completely, stomach acid and food flow back into the esophagus. Acid reflux can cause sore throats and hoarseness, often creating a bad taste in your mouth. It is reported about 5 million Canadians experience GERD symptoms weekly. This can affect the quality of one's life and cause damage to the esophagus. If you've been having repeated episodes of heartburn, like me, or any other symptoms of acid reflux, you might try the following. Enjoy eating small meals more frequently rather than a large meal. Eat and drink slowly and don't gulp your drinks. It is suggested not to use a straw as this facilitates gulping. I have always used a straw. When you gulp your drinks, you may swallow more air, consequently creating problems. It is highly recommended to also stop smoking, as nicotine relaxes the muscles in the opening of the stomach. In addition, avoid wearing tight clothing across your stomach or chest. Experts suggest avoiding gum, carbonated drinks, my downfall, spicy foods, fatty foods, tomatoes, garlic, and onions. These are all my favorite things, yet they can contribute to this condition. Another trigger is alcohol, as are tea, coffee, and chocolate. What's a girl to do? No tea or chocolate. Back to square one. I was sick for five months last year before we discovered I had developed acid reflux. It was the worst pain I had experienced and did not want a repeat performance, so I am now taking medications for this condition. I have tried eliminating certain things to see if doing so controls my reflux. I am slowly adding them back one by one. This state has also pushed up my diabetic readings over the last month. When you're standing, gravity helps keep acid in the stomach where it belongs. I am sure not to nap or sleep after eating, and wait at least two hours to lay down or sleep. This includes no midnight snacking. If you were to attempt this, your head should be at least six to eight inches higher than your feet. So, for me, my husband has put risers on our bed. I encourage you, if you are experiencing these symptoms, talk to your doctor and check your medications. This got me thinking, what is the spiritual significance of acid reflux? What is God trying to tell me, if he is at all? I suppose he is reminding me to take appropriate action, to take a mindful approach of what my body is experiencing and telling me, with regards to my healing. Apparently, I am not a good listener lately, and have lost that connection. Of course, stress plays a big factor. I am taking more time through rest, to practice relaxation, and am becoming more prayerful. I am trying to eat more balanced and healthy meals. However, I am reminded constructive stress is an effective tool in the hands of God, as he intends it both for his glory and our good. God designed our bodies to send us messages when we wander off course. As we learn to listen, we can learn to respond with new disciplines in our lives and find growth there. We can all pause to properly listen to our bodies. This can help us feel better and get on the right road to recovery. We may not always know what God is doing in our lives, but the important thing is, He does. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.